This video is about using the comparison method of ASTM E112 for determining average grain size for line pipe steels. For the comparison method, we don't have to count grains. Instead, we compare the image of our microstructure on our screen with images of known grain size, size and we choose the standard that looks most similar in terms of grain size to our image. There are several different types of comparison charts that can be used to evaluate grain structures depending on what type of microstructure you have. The comparison charts are not in the ASTM E112. They have to be purchased separately. And the one that we're most interested in that's going to apply for most of our or most closely to our steels for line pipes are the untwinned grains. The other types of charts are for twinned grains. These are uh, twins, straight lines. They're a type of growth defect that occurs in some types of alloys, not likely to be present in our line pipe steels. And then a different kind of etching where the etching highlights and contrasts the grain orientation. These are, this is a single phase material. So the etching is only showing uh, contrast orientation. So that doesn't apply because ours will be, our, our images will be etched uh, showing mainly the grain boundaries. And then the last kind that we're also not interested in is this dark field type of etching. In the past, users of ASTM E112 relied heavily on wall charts and transparencies for comparison with their microstructures. We are updating our process to use digitized comparison charts. The original charts were typically intended for comparison with a standard size of image, say 100x. We're going to adapt the process so that we can use images of any type of magnification, and we will simply calculate an adjustment factor. So to summarize the comparison procedure, we'll begin by pulling up our image and finding the comparison chart with the grains that most closely match the average grain size of the grains in our image. Then we will record that number, G0, for the selected comparison chart. Next, we have to calculate the adjustment factor, Q, which will depend on the magnification of our image, M, and the magnification of the chart, M sub B. Now, M and M sub B are the annotations from the ASTM E112. We're going to change those for our purposes to simplify and make it straightforward, more understandable. We're going to call it M sub I for magnification of the image and M sub C for magnification of the chart. M sub I is the scale bar of the image measured, SIM, divided by scale bar of the image printed, SIP. Similarly, the magnification of the chart is scale bar of the chart measured, SCM, divided by scale bar of the chart printed. Once we solve for M sub I and M sub C, it's just a matter of plugging into the formula for Q. We calculate our adjustment factor, Q, then we add that adjustment factor to the comparison ASTM grain size G0 that we chose using the comparison with the charts. The sum of those two gives us the final answer, the ASTM grain size estimate using the comparison method. Now note that here in the lower right corner is, the, is a screenshot from ASTM E112 just showing where the original equations came from to create the formula that we use to calculate our magnification adjustment factor Q. Now we're going to do an exercise 
in using the comparison method to estimate grain size. We will estimate grain size for the following image. This is the microstructure for which we're going to use the comparison method from ASTM E112 to estimate the grain size. Our first step is to get our image of interest on the screen and to get the grain size charts up on the screen and find the closest matching grain size chart. I brought into the presentation several charts to start with that I thought looked similar to the grain size of our image of interest. Now I'm gonna put our image of interest in front of some of the charts and start moving it around without changing the magnification and look to see which of the charts looks most similar to the grain size of our image. So when I look at ASTM grain size number 3.0, I think to me these grains look a little bit bigger than the grains in my image. When I look at ASTM grain size 3.5, they may be close, but maybe just a little bit bigger than the grains in my image. When I look at ASTM grain size number four, that actually to me looks fairly appropriate. Seems to match pretty closely to my eye, the grains in our image. But we should look at some of the others to see if we have found the sweet spot. So now I've moved our image over so that I can look at some of the others for the higher grain size numbers, which implies smaller grains. To me, ASTM grain size 4.5 actually does look smaller than the grains in my image. Similarly, 5.0 and 5.5 look much smaller than the grains in our image. So I go back here and we choose ASTM grain size 4.0 as the closest matching grain size from the charts. To reiterate, we chose the ASTM grain size number 4.0 from the charts. Now we have to calculate the adjustment factor Q. And I previously made these measurements, two measurements with a ruler up against the scale bars on your screen, and then two that are printed. So the scale of the image, S sub I, measured S sub I M, I measured as 46 millimeters by putting a ruler up to my screen. I'll show in the next slide. And then the scale scale bar of the image S sub IP printed. The printed number was 200 microns. Similarly, for the grain size charts, the scale bar of the chart that I measured was 42 and a half millimeters. And the scale bar for the chart that was printed was one millimeter. I will show that on the next slide. Here I'm showing the measurements. I brought up the slide again with both my image for comparison for my microstructure and the comparison charts from the standard. And I measured this with a ruler on my screen to be 42 and a half millimeters. And the printed, so the actual length of that in terms of the magnification of these standards is one millimeter. So my magnification would be 42.5 divided by one millimeter, so 42 and a half X for the standard images. And then for my image, my image of interest, I measured the scale bar to be 46.0 millimeters with a ruler on my screen and the printed length 
for the actual this actual steel pipe the this length of the microstructure this amount of length on the microstructure is 200 micrometers so the magnification is 46.0 millimeters divided by 200 micrometers which is which is actually equivalent to 46.0 millimeters divided by 0.2 millimeters to make the math just a little bit simpler And so now you see how we arrived at these figures. The magnification for the image, 46 millimeters divided by 0 0.2 millimeters is a magnification of 230X. And then the magnification of the chart from the standard was 42.5 millimeters divided by one millimeter, which is 42.5 X magnification. We plug the MI and the MC into the equation for the adjustment factor Q. And when we calculate the adjustment factor, we get approximately 4.9. So the final answer for the grain size number G was our G naught from the chart that we chose, which was 4.0 plus our adjustment factor for magnification that we calculated, which is 4.9 for a final grain size of 8.9. Now to revisit the utility of table four from ASTM E112, once we've estimated that our grain size number is about 8.9, which is pretty close to nine, we can also use this chart to estimate that there's about 4,000 grains per every square millimeter. That each grain has about 250 square microns of area, that the average grain diameter is about 16 micrometers, and the average mean linear intercept is about 14.1 micrometers. And when we get through the fundamentals, we're gonna provide you a Microsoft Excel tool where we use the equations provided in ASTM E112 to convert between the different values for grain size so we don't have to rely to the imprecise values from table four. Now we're gonna make a few quick notes about the ASTM E112 comparison method for grain size estimation. We're not actually sure if it works for non equiax grains, for grains with jagged boundaries, and for microstructures with greater than 30% perlite. We're gonna use the method almost universally. And as a result of our study, we should get a better idea how well it works for these non-standard microstructures. There also seems to be a general bias in using the comparison grain size method. So studies have shown that the comparison method actually quantitatively makes the grains look bigger, about a half to one grain size, ASTM grain size number lower than the counting methods and then it actually is. Other than that, repeatability and reproducibility of the comparison chart ratings are usually good to within plus or minus one ASTM grain size number.